Tyrone's brother was Big Rick, OG60, rider, money maker, hustler, thug motherfucker. No, I'm, I'm the original Big Keystone, from West Side Rolling 60s. Big Cat from West Side Neighborhood, original 60s. All right, my name is Myron Tobin. I used to go by the name Doe Eye, Neighborhood Rolling 60s Crip, uh, AKA Mr. Spooky, also Mr. Boxer. Uh, number ones on both of those. Well, of course, of course, we know who I am. I'm Mumpy. I'm Big Mumpy from the, from the Rolling Sixties. For the six foes on spokes For the OGs that did a dime Came back around on parole uh, For the homegirls with the scrap game yeah. Little homies that gang bang From Pelican Bay to YA Rearrange your mind frame Yeah, I know what you been through uh, Shit, you had to go tend to Your mama gave birth on the turf I know them killers you kin to This for the lost generation Broke as hell, mad and impatient But if you know your history You can't have a strong foundation, baby Can't make video, video You know, this is for sure You know, I was out raised in Texas with all the all the stones. My family, my mom and them a maiden name of Stones. So I, I grew up out there. My brother, them they was on second half and where well, they grew up in LA. Welcome to 63rd Street, home turf of the rolling 60s, part of the largest street gang in all of Los Angeles. A gang called the Crips. <laughs> When I come to LA, LA in 1971, we was living on 2nd Avenue between 67th and 70th, you know, around the corner from Big Rick. I grew up on 65th and Arlington, down the street from Tyrone, up the street from Tyrone, Joe Rat, Ace Rat, Ronnie Pace, Keystone lived around the corner. I've been in the hood since 1967. My family moved into the Rolling 60 neighborhood in 1974. <laughs> At that time, West Side was predominant. In my opinion, people was trying to find their footing, you know what I mean? Because you had a lot of startup groups. What now is the 60s was West Side. You know, the Baker Boys, uh, um, Devil Them, uh, Johnny Graham Them, Devil Them, they had their 7 1 Crips. You know, the only ones I'm familiar with is the 7 Trades. See, I'm familiar with them, right? And I don't know what they morphed into. I don't know if like, they all became, because you know, they had niggas from their gang like Rattlesnake, this nigga named Sir Candyman, the nigga Booger, Little Larry. But it wasn't, it wasn't a whole bunch of them. You know, they might have had like one or two homegirls. They was just a block of niggas. We went through a slossing phase then. They had some niggas over there. I think they was calling themselves the Bishops. The West Side Bishops. At that time, it was the West Side Avenues. You had the Avs. <laughs> you had some niggas over there on, on Dinker. Some little Crip niggas over there. But then there was a few cats up out the hills that were trying to do their own thing. There wasn't one particular game in that, in they, in they, in that neighborhood at that point in time. Our hood was going through different transitions. Well, we were trying to find our own identity. And also, there was a game known as the Chain Game. About 74, in the year of 74, we, we all turned from our hood, we turned our West Side neighborhoods. I want to say 75. And then from West Side neighborhoods evolved into rolling sixes. <laughs> There was a few individuals that lived over there. Alex, Mad Dog, Country, his brother. It was a gang of individuals that lived over there, but it was a gang of individuals that just migrated, lived all around the neighborhood on 76 and 
8th Ave. That's all around through, through, through throughout the 60s. Where I lived at, you know, you had um, Bayard and them, Rip and them, Rick and them stayed around the corner, Mark Bolton and them stayed down the street. My name is Mark Bolton, formerly known as Bad News. It's all the same group. Hatchet and all of us ran together. Odie Shaw and us all ran together. There was a lot of young cats over there. I gravitated across Crenshaw. My running mates was across Crenshaw. You know what I mean? The Broomfield, it was pretty deep. Because I had went to Horse Man and became close with, with Babyface, with his brother Huey, with his brother Slew, and, and I gravitated to Arlington. You know, you got the whole Springer family on Arlington. You got Doe Eye on Arlington. You got Ronnie Payson on Arlington. It's a gang of niggas on Arlington. But you got to go to Big Rick House because this is where everything is at. Went to elementary school, 59th. From 59th, went to Hyde Park. Well, I started a school out here in seventh grade at Horse Man in 71, 72. My last year at Horse Man, 1972. I left Horse Man and went on to Crenshaw High School and started my first year at Crenshaw. It was like 1972, 1973. Yeah, I went to Crenshaw from 75 to 78. I went to 59th. Elementary school. I went to Horse Man. Went to Crenshaw, L.A. Dorsey, Washington. Got kicked out of all of them for this gang activity thing. You know, heavily involved with the gang activity. So, you know how that go. I'm a product of Seventy Fourth Elementary School. I'm a product of Horse Man Junior High. I'm a product of Crenshaw High, although I got kicked up out of there. I'm a product of Whitney Young, Dorsey, Dominguez. I met Tyrone at 74th Street School Elementary. 74th Street Elementary School, uh, which is the elementary school I attended. And uh, how I met Tyrone is he jacked me for a dollar. Everybody, you know, go through their tests. You know what I'm saying? We were new to the neighborhood at the time, uh, and uh, I didn't know him. Growing up, being a young nigga, when we growing up, uh, young old niggas test. You know, we going through the test. They trying to see where you're hard at and everything else. So you know, it, it was it was it was like a a growing stage. Them niggas was my big brothers or some shit like that. You know, just teaching me the ropes. We had to know that you would fight. If you ask niggas about me, you find the right nigga. They gonna tell you, listen, man, Mump was wasn't doing up but giving ditching parties in the hood. It'd be like five or six niggas and a bunch of bitches. That's what Monk was doing. Right across to you from Horace, man, you want to go to the party? Go across the street on 68th, nigga, they got it going on. My house, well, where I grew up at, which my mom still lives there. This is 40, 43, 44 years later. Tyrone was riding his bicycle down at 67th. I, my, my home was on 67th and Hass, right on the corner. Um, and Tyrone was riding a bike down the street. And I happened to look out the window and saw him. And I told my brother, hey, that's that guy that took that money from me. And so my brother, who was uh, BB, my brother BB, who's uh, about three years older than me, uh, ran outside and confronted Tyrone. You know, me and him confronted Tyrone. And, and you know, us, we had just moved from the Pueblo Projects. So, uh, you know, we weren't no pushovers either moving over to the west side and uh so my brother asked tyrone you know about the money it was a little confrontation a scuffle tyrone ended up running and and dropping his bike and he ran on a he you know ran down the street went west on 67th street and uh when he came back at that time that was 1974 at that time the rolling 60s hung out on Arlington, the street Arlington, which was two blocks from where I live, between 67th and 70th Street. That was all the, the main rolling 60s hung out there. You could not have been on Arlington and didn't know Tyrone. Tyrone, he was a very likable guy. He was like, because he used to hang around like my brother, Shyster and all them. You know, they had their own little crew. I really, you know, stopped going to school at about the eighth grade. You know, when shit started really taking off, 
um, I stopped going to horse. I, I went up to horse, man, and, you know, hung out for a minute. Then I go up to the high school with the rest of the niggas, with the other big homies and shit, you know, chasing after them, seeing what they doing. And uh, Tyrone came back with all the rolling 60s. Big Rick, Babyface, uh, Jackie, his sister. Uh, I mean, Jackie, uh, Dyer. I remember Dyer was there. I knew Dyer and that. I knew all his, his family. Uh, all of the Springers, JD, KK, Lil Catman, uh, all these cats. I mean, literally, it was cars and and bikes, and, and it was little kids, uh, grown adults, came over to our house, and uh, it was four of us, uh, ranging in ages from 14 to seven. My little brother, Mike, was seven at the time. And we all stood our ground on the porch uh, while my brother, B.B., talked to Big Rick. And Big Rick, you know, asked him, you know, hey, who, which one of y'all, you know, rushed my brother? And my brother, B.B., said it was me. And so uh, at the time, my, my hand was in a sling, my, my arm, I uh, sprung my, my wrist at school. And uh, so Big Rick said, well, you know, you and your brother, you know, he took the money from your brother. So him and you and him go head up, Tyrone and your brother. And I'm like, well, I'm in a sling. So my brother said that BB, he said he'll go head up with Tyrone. And so, uh, so Tyrone was like, nah, I'm cool. And so we just made it cool right there. We squashed it. And uh, ever since then, we was kind of like in with the hood. So that's that's pretty much my how we met Tyrone, Big Rick, and and the rest of the crew. Big Rick is the, is the one who I looked up to as far as once I got in the door, you know, to the lifestyle. But the thing about that is that I wasn't dr really drawn to the lifestyle because of, per se, certain people in the hood. But it had this impression of being cool. That's what drew me into the lifestyle. It wasn't more so like, wow, I want to be from the 60s because the 60s didn't exist at that time as I knew it. Like, as far as like, you know, the rolling 60s or anything with the 60s on it. It wasn't in play at that time. It was the, you know, I'm seeing these dudes with the waistline leather coats, these dudes wearing these maxi leather coats with the brim hats, the cool little derbies and all that shit with the, with the penalties. And so I'm drawn to that. And I noticed that the girls are drawn to it as well. And so, you know, I, I, damn, if I get in that, shit, I get the girl. So I want to be in. So I was more so looking up into the, the lifestyle, so to speak, as far as how it appeared to be from the outside looking in. We was in the sports and shit, too. You know, we played basketball and all that shit. Rick had a basketball court in the back of his house, and we used to go down there and play uh, basketball and hoops and shit. Then we used to go up to the schools and play that shit and football and all, you know, in the streets. We'd be out there in the streets playing, you know, football in the streets. It's supposed to be tag, but we knocking niggas in the cars and all that shit. But, uh, yeah, it, it, we had a few little spots like that. And then, like I said, we used to fuck with them Hoovers, some A-Trey Hoovers, and we used to go over the neighborhood and shit and hang out with some of them niggas. So, and they used to come over Joe Rat House and hang out in the back and all that shit. So, you know, we had a few little spots. Well, our relationship with the Hoovers was just like that of, of that with the gangsters. It just wasn't as close because more so with the Hoovers, it was certain niggas. Like a lot of niggas from the foe would come and hang out in the hood with us. Like, like I said, the homie Lil Nun, he would always come over there, you know, kicking on Arlington, you know, be shooting dice with the niggas who do a lot of the, you know, dice shooting. You know, we'd go and, and hang out in a Trey Hoover hood, you know, and fuck with their homies, Lil Bam and all of them. I mean, because at that time, you know, you're talking about an era when everything was about cripping, everything was about unity. So one of your greatest joys was always going to another hood hanging out. It's like we used to function together. We used to go to parties, everything, all that shit, you know, we, you know, cause I mean, they was like the progenitors because they was before we was, you know what I'm saying? When we was trying to still figure out what we was gonna be, who we was gonna be. I mean, them niggas was already doing their thing, you know? So, uh, yeah, we used to, we it it, it 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 was it was all love though. It was like it it, it was cool. We used to hang out, fuck with them. Uh, most of them made Trey Hoovers though. Hey Trey Hoovers, you know we always was close with the gangsters because we went to school with them. If you seen one, you seen another. If you seen you seen an A Trey gangster, you seen a Rolling Sixty. You seen a Rolling Sixty, you seen an A Trey gangster. We partied together, we kicked it together. 
I mean, that was they were they were our real true solid ally because you have to remember at this time, this is when you got what you call the Crips and the True Blood Wars. So we beefing with the Inglewood families, you know, and them niggas was a force to be dealt with. Like, like make no mistake about it, the Inglewood families was pushing a line. You know, we didn't have no issue with the, with the VNGs. You know, we like toward that shit. You know, that, that shit was there was like nothing. We toward that. So our, our major beef was coming with the families. Dirty Red, Little Caesar, uh, Ricochet, Cricket, uh, uh, JB. And the same thing with the A-Trade Gangsters. They beef was with the families. But as a whole, between us, you know, we had a real loving relationship. These is niggas that we was going to school with as far as like going to Horseman Junior High. That's the hood where at that school all you had was niggas from A-Trade Gangsters and the Rolling Sixties. You know, so these is our dudes. You know, like they big homie, Melvin Farmer, you know, Skull. That's the, that's the big homie. That, that, that's my big homie to the day. I got the utmost respect and love for that nigga. That's a solid nigga. You know what I'm saying? They homie Big Vamp. That's a solid nigga. These is niggas that we was fucking with. They homie Smokey. These are solid niggas. You know, as far as just the, the niggas of the different era that I talked about when I was telling you, like, you know, Trey Ball and A-Ball. These is niggas that I'm fucking with right there in the area because they live right there in the area. They live like on 68, 69, 74. So they right there in that proximity with us. I mean, like the homie Cutes, like he stayed directly down the street from me. He was just on the other side of Western. You know, so everybody knows everybody. Was Q's viewed as as closer to the A-Trades or the 60s? Q's, Q's was viewed closer to the A-Trades. But Q's wasn't from A-Trade Gangs. From my idea, I think Q's was a seven. If I yeah. always thought Q's was a magnificent seven. You know, that's what, that's what, that's what Q's was from. Then I met Tyrone. He was just a little nigga. He was a little bit younger than me, but he that nigga was he he was straight. You know, he was straight down with everything. He you know he no cut.